It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Like flies to honey, the monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the Magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Things I do to complete a contract. fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. There. It's not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Oh, do go on. I won't hold it against you. Promise. My, aren't we a meek little lamb? Perhaps I needn't have collared you at all, though it does look darling on you. So let's just leave it on, shall we? Because, to answer your question, what the collar does is this. It makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. The good ship Merryweather. But you can stand at ease there, Private. You do realize you're not in any army here, don't you? Index fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word. You do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh well. I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Bloody murder. Looks like someone's hit the Hall of Echoes a little early. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no Voidwalk and followed the source that did this. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Finn was killed by source. If a Magister could do that, it wouldn't be a Magister. It looks more like a passenger managed to slip their collar. And the rest, well, you see the evidence in front of you. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Not in here it isn't. You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous.
hatch is the hatch is blocked. I'll need to find another way. Quiet long enough for me to listen. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? The ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash, and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? Sick as a leper's cat. From the state of it, I'd say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mums. But there's more. Listen close. There now, just like that. Aha. His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. It's the wheel. The wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been traveling for, yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Eh, no indeed, boy. But that ain't my final destination. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. I've seen more appetizing things coming out of plague stricken. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. You one of them? A divine order loyal. They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. There has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Magisters more concern than your appetite. Don't you get saucy with me when you clearly... Well, well, what have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Ah, oh, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave, in short, uh, t yes, I can tell from your vagabond chic, a bag is as good as a shirt kind of style. I shouldn't be getting my hopes up. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Just as I thought. That explains what's besieging my nostrils. 
So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can cook, but you have the fashion sense of a monkey in a clown suit, and your personal hygiene reminds one of a carcass rotting in the sun. That won't do at all, see? I'm sad to say I must deny you the opportunity to be my slave. Uh, I know, I know, but you just don't have what it takes. A good slave's made of sterner stuff, I'm afraid. Still, hone your skills, and one day you may just qualify for a position in a lesser household than mine. You keep dreaming, you hear? <sighs> I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. <gasps> the indignity. Good find. How dare you classify this slop as food? I've seen more appetizing things coming out of plague-stricken pigs. There's... there's nothing else I can make, Your Majesty. Turnips and water are all I was given. Unacceptable. I've never dined on anything less than a course dinner, and I don't intend to do away with Well, uh, there has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Majesty more concerned than more don't you get started with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. Fuss and tight. You put a knuckle in it. I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrow. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. She shakes her head. Game for one, I'm afraid. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue. Efficient, like a cat grooming. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, it seems you and another elf engaged in an action somewhat similar to the one I just performed. Only rather more vigorously. She pats you on the shoulder consolingly. There, there. Don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. You are <clears throat> husband. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. One of us in our own. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? 
You presume right. Nope. Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and takes your hand, turning it this way and that, examining it from every angle. Finally, he pinches your skin, gently tugging at it. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. I am reading. Is this not evident? My book is in my hands. My face turned away from you. Perhaps my eyes not on the page. Damnable things. He grabs a metal plate and watches his reflection with one eye as the other shifts left to right and up to down. He repeats the maneuver with the opposite eye. No, they are working quite adequately. It seems you are at fault. Predictable, really. Ah, yes. The niceties. My name is Fane. I am a scholar from... Well, I am a seeker of knowledge. That is enough. It is pleasurable to meet you. Is there? Wherever do you keep it? Certainly not in your books. I have been reading this one for several minutes, and I have yet to find a single insight into the mysteries of the universe. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Oh, please. I have no interest in that. No. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book, or respond to your questions. It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? I'm glad to hear it. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Are all I was given. Keep those bolts trained on her. And if she tries to run, shoot her kid. I've never died on anything. This again. All about it. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella. Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God, the woman's mad. You there, sorcerer, go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, men, quickly! If she casts Source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely.
what's happened. Damn it. Need to get off this wreck. Quick. Oh, damn. That doesn't load well. Onwards and upwards. Splinters. Great God, something's pounding on the hull. on the door was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You recognize the symbol immediately for what it is. A warning of death fog within. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply gray. The color drains from your hand, and you are left numb. It doesn't budge.
chance. Children and dwarfs first, just like the old stories say. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. They said there were other people down there. We... we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here. Thank you, thank you, thank you! There's a ladder right over there. You can go straight down. You're gonna be the death of us in here. Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding. If you can walk, get yourself up the ladder. There's a wait! Void woken! Let the games begin. Telling where there might be more. We need to move. Not carry. This old tub is about to burst. Away. Oh, the sea's hungry. We don't have much time.
I have plans for you, child. Rise. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity, High Judge Orivan. <laughs> 